So firstly, I've been harvesting hazelnuts and end up with my pile of shells discarded and my wonderful hazelnuts. So once I have my bowl of ready shelled hazelnuts, I like to, I've got these net bags, I've got quite a few. I gather them up from, I hang onto them for years, usually with mandarin oranges in them from the supermarkets. So whenever I have any fruits that are in these little net bags, so I tip my hazelnuts into the net bag and I'll just tie a loose single knot in the top. I don't want to crush the nuts up tight. I want to keep them so they can move around in here, loose and floppy. If I can get this knot, oh, fiddle, fiddle. There we go. So it's, it's a loose floppy bag. Another one here that needs tying up. If I spin that round a little bit, it creates a nice narrow neck for me to tie up and just tie that in a it's not a super tight knot then they're only going to be in this bag for a few weeks but i do need to be able to tip it and shake it around and not have my nuts falling out so i want to keep these moving and aired so i'll lay a towel out on the work surface usually a dressing table in this in the spare bedroom and um and turn these over once a week really Whenever I'm in there, getting something out of the airing cupboard, I'll flip the nuts around. Now I've got lots, I'm interested to see how many. So I'm gonna go and weigh them and find out. But this year, up in the spare room, I have a different nut drying system going on. This is where I usually do my ironing in here and hang things up on this rail that need to be ironed. So I've just draped my net bags across these coat hangers. You need to balance out the weight so you've got equally on each side. So they're getting lots of air around them. I don't need to move them around as much. And they're just hanging there, drying up. I'm interested to see how many I've actually got though. So I'm gonna take them all off, try and pile them all into the one bowl so that I can actually find out how many nuts have I got for the winter. Oh, while we're here, um, underneath, I have a small amount of sunflower seeds as well that I've also been shelling and harvesting. So, hazelnuts, four bags, five, six, seven, eight, one and a half kilos, nine, 10, 11. Now this is one nut tree in my garden. It's a red filbert i like it because of its lovely red leaves so from one red filbert tree i've got four pound nine ounces of hazelnuts that should keep me going very nicely for an entire season of nut munching <laughs> like a little squirrel and we're going to see the rest of my jobs for the day so along with my wonderful hazelnut harvest, here's the next two tasks I have lined up for me. I'll bring you in closer. We have green and yellow peppers here. The, the outdoor pepper plants are start, starting to suffer with the cooler evenings. So I've decided to just take all the peppers off and deal with them now. The seeds out and chop them into pieces and put them in the dehydrator to make dehydrated pepper to store over the winter. That can be added to soups and stews and then an absolute glut of wonderful tomatoes i've been munching as i've been picking and using but now we have an end of season glut so i'm going to boil these all up into chop them up put them in a pan and boil them up into tomato soup and i will put that in kilner jars as well in the next room along more food processing to happen. Lots and lots of wonderful apples. I've got some huge cooking apples and quite a few dessert apples, eating apples. I'm gonna, I shall mix them all. There's no separation. I'll peel and chop everything. So all these apples will be cooked and put into kilner jars, ready for making winter apple pies. Uh, I don't need to do anything with squashes here. Just put them away. 
and these tiny tiny little squash perfectly formed what's happened with those and the reason they're so tiny is having planted lots of seeds for summer growing of squash the plants these came from never got out of those little three inch pots i was just too busy i planted lots of squashes and for whatever reason these half dozen plants never got planted in the garden so stayed alive amazingly in those little tiny three inch pots all summer long and to my surprise they still produced a flower and tiny little fruit and they are so cute <laughs> so i might even do that in future on purpose just to create a cute little autumn display besides my giant enormous pumpkins that i usually love to grow and harvest now for my last task of the day preparing my peppers to go in the dehydrator really quick and simple we're just cutting off the flesh removing the seeds we can keep some of those for growing next year so cut the flesh off my peppers cut them into pieces cut them into strips first of all and then into I suppose centimetre square chunks chunk chunk I have a dehydrator this was a nice relatively cheap I think it cost me 30 pounds new I love it <laughs> but I love so many things plugs in it's electric and it basically creates some heat and has a little fan blowing in the bottom so dehydrator sheets and lay my pepper chunks out on top with enough space to let the air flow around them fill these up stack them up switch it on and let it run and tomorrow our peppers should be all nice and dry and crispy, ready to put in jars for winter storage. Chop, chop. So again, you don't need to see me chopping them all up. We'll show you when the dehydrator is all loaded up and full. Yay! Last job of the day, finally done. All the peppers chopped and diced and put in the dehydrator, ready to switch on. These all need to be in here for about 18 to 24 hours. So I won't give them a second thought until tomorrow when they should be dry and crispy and tiny, little tiny bits ready to store into a jar. Again, for adding to winter soups and stews. For those of you that have not seen a dehydrator before, it's basically, there's a, sometimes they're square, sometimes they're round. There's a bottom panel. When you plug it in and switch it on, this will get warm. And it has a fan in it that circulates the warm air around. The foods that you want to dehydrate get placed, on, get placed onto these um, mesh trays and spread out whether you're dehydrating peppers or bananas and pineapples and you did you can you do tomatoes corn all sorts of things can go into your dehydrator you load up the trays and stack them all up pop on the lid plug it in switch it on and leave it running which will give you dry dehydrated goods. Even if you're not actually growing your own food to dehydrate, you can buy things in the supermarket and put them in your dehydrator if you want to be storing extra foods. Should you get snowed in or something like that, you might need. I love it. It's a really great piece of kit. Well, I've had a wonderful busy day. I've managed to prepare all those apples 
into a wonderful apple pie filling. So I now have 11 jars of apple pie filling to see me through the winter months or all of next year. I can use apple pie filling next summer before the apples are ready to come off the trees. Along with that, I met earlier, I made my four cans of tomato soup. We've got those. So lots of apple pie. Ooh, nice colour contrast. And a little bit of tomato soup. Earlier this morning we were looking at all the hazelnuts. Two and a half kilos of hazelnut. And so far, a few sunflower seeds as well. So all good things ready to go into the store cupboard for our winter harvest. A pretty successful day I would say. Lots of wonderful homegrown food prepared and ready to go into store for winter munching. Wonderful. So whatever you're doing, have fun doing it and I'll see you next time. Bye!